Hello, my name is Michael Whitner, and I'll be presenting about the HTTP desync attack. A little bit of background about it. It was discovered by James Kittle of Portswigger in 2019. Portswigger makes Burp Suite if that helps you associate where James Kittle works. It is a vulnerability on HTTP, which is an application level protocol. It is a type of request smuggling attack, which means the attacker is trying to sneak a malicious packet into a valid packet and get a response from the server. If you want a visual representation of it, here is um, an attacker sneaking in a malicious um, malicious code into, into his packet. He sends that over and the malicious code actually gets a, appended to the normal user in this case. It is a multi-tiered attack, so unlike this example here, it requires a proxy and a server in order to attack. And the goal is to desynchronize complex systems, particularly in the web. So how does desync happen? So there's a couple properties in HTTP 1.1 that makes this happen. It uses the keep alive property, which keep when keep alive is enabled, it reuses a TCP string. It also has transfer encoding chunked, which means when this is enabled, um, the uh, server sends data or the, the server or the client sends data in a series of chunks and it knows how much it's being sent in a chunk based on the size prepended to the chunk. So it'll be size, chunk, size, chunk. The combination can lead to prepending the next packet within additional data. So one of the chunks that could have um, a malicious packet in it based on the properties of these two being enabled. In James Kittle's paper, he explains the whole process of detecting, confirming, exploring, and either storing or attacking. Um, in my presentation, I'm going to be going over these three steps, um, mainly because I want you to present that this attack exists, what damage it could be done, but not really go over how it can be repeated. Um, exploring takes a long time, and it's mainly just collecting information on the server either using HTTP desync or by other methods. So let's figure out a way that we can detect HTTP desync attacks. And let's also assume for the rest of the presentation that the keep alive property is enabled because most of the time by default, keep alive is enabled. We are going to send a packet that is designed to time out if the server is vulnerable to desync. So an example of this is a letter, a symbol, that anything that is not a number. With this method, false positives can occur, even though they're unlikely. So just be careful of that. So here's an example of a packet that we can construct. So we have a post request that has chunk, uh, that has chunk enabled, and then we're going to send a content length of 1, z, uh, Z as the data, and then a content length of Q. As you can tell, 1 is a valid content length, but Q is an invalid content length. By having Q there, the server will time out if, if the server is vulnerable to HTTP desync. If it's not, if it's not then it'll get back an invalid either an invalid response or it'll just whatever safety measures that particular server has. Now that we have detected it, let's confirm this. So we have a post request to example.com on the endpoint search with Z chunk enabled. We're going to send a we're going to send 17 a uh, content like content that is 17 bytes long, um, which is what you see right um, right here. Then it's going to be, then we're going to say we're finished, and then we're going to send a pack, and then we're going to send a packet that is a 404 error, and and then we're going to make a request to search. This here 
is where we're going to detect, confirm whether it's vulnerable by trying to sneak in a packet after um, ch after we said we're done sending chunk data um, and pretend it's a ch part of the chunk. We're going to prepend it to the post request. If we get that 404 error, then we have then we know that the server is vulnerable. As here is an example of the, a valid response. We get the search, we get this 404 error, and then we get another post request to search. So based on this, we know that the server is vulnerable to HTTP desync. I will be now I will now be demonstrating how to do an HTTP desync attack um, through this through the example of a CTF challenge. This CTF challenge was a part of DEF CON CTF 2020 called Uploaded. It uses HTA proxy, Gunicorn, Python, uh, and Python to create this vulnerability. So as HTA proxy um, is vulnerable to HTTP request smuggling on these versions, and, Gu and Gunicorn is where we actually are going to desynchronize it particularly um, below versions 20.0.2 and below not versions 19.10. If we are successful in exploiting this, we will be presented a flag. So let's go over some of the code that actually makes this CTF challenge work. So we have on the right here, uh, we have on the right here the server, and then we have on the left is the attack. So let's break down the server first, and then we'll break down how the attack works. So on in the server code, we have a secret. We have a sleep time of two seconds. And the endpoint to this is this files. So th this secret is going to be sent out to through this function put, put file um, in the data section. And the server is going to run a loop, try to send this put file. Use, execute this put file function, which will be a post request, and it'll have a sleep timer of two seconds. So now, if we break down the attack, we're going. We have to set it, set up the packets in a way that we will um, we will be able to send a desynchronization. So we're going. To, let's start off with the this first packet. This first packet is going to talk to the server and actually try to um, attack it. And with that, it's going to smuggle this payload. This all gets constructed within the CLTE function, which essentially uh, appends the, the payload to the CLTE template. And a reminder, the CLTE template is this packet here. And it's also going to calculate some offsets and stuff like that. It will send that through this request function, which essentially all it's going to do is send those two packets out. So afterwards, we're going to send a get request, which will have this payload, um, which will essentially the server will think this payload is prepended to this get request. Once that, once we're successful with this, um, we are going to get back the flag. And we're going to just print it to our screen. So let's see this in action. So I am running on an Ubuntu machine uh, that has Docker. And this has the CTF challenge um, able to run locally on it. So on the, on the left, we have the attack. On the right, we're going to have the server. Let's start off. Let's start the server. So we have Gunicorn HA proxy, and with this user invoker, it's starting to send out the post request. And these post requests have our flag. So now we need to figure out how to intercept this. So let's run our attack.py script and see what happens. So we just send out the packets, and we are now. So now we got back the flag. This we got back a response that is one of these post requests 
which I, particularly I think is this one. And that will, and that gave us the flat. So let's break it down a little and see what how we got there. So we first sent up, we sent out the payload, then we sent out a a get request. We got a post response back um, because of the prepended post request, and then we had congratulations, you got the flat. Now on the server side, it received both of the. Uh, both of the packet, the malicious packets, the attacker and the hack, and then it did until not until two two packets afterwards, meaning four seconds, did it get this uh, malicious um, or not malicious the non malicious get request, which then with this uh, with this post request with this post response back. We got the flag. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my presentation on HTTP desync attacks. I hope you learned a lot, and if you want to learn more, here are the links to the paper, some blog posts explaining a little bit more about this uh, particular C why the CTF challenge worked, and the actual GitHub link to the CTF challenge. On the link below is my is uh, the link to my slides. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.